If you're one of those people that can only find their way around using GPS, then this lesson is definitely going to teach you something. Yeah, that's right. We're going to talk about basic geography skills. It's actually one of the most overlooked topics in social studies, not to mention being a tremendously useful life skill. But it's so helpful in predicting things like weather, how people make money, and it's even a predictor of our own civil war. Hello, I'm Mr. Chaffin, and in today's lesson, we are going to get a better understanding of geographic regions, including why something as simple as where a location is on a map can determine its economy. So, all of you directionally challenged people, follow me. Let's get started. For starters, the British colonies, aka the 13 colonies, fit nicely into three regions. Think of these regions sort of like categories that help us sort out the differences and figure out why each region is unique. Now this next part will require a super simple understanding of direction, so if you're ready, let's get started. For instance, if you were staring at a map and were asked which way is south, you should point down. If asked which way is north, you should point up. All right, if something is stuck in between those two points, you would say it is in the middle. All right, guys, three for three. Now let's take that knowledge and apply it to the three regions. We'll start with the New England region. It is the northernmost region, so it has four colonies at the top of a 13 colonies map. They are New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. If we had to summarize the geography of this region, we would say that it had long, cold winters, an arid climate, which means that it didn't get a lot of rain, lots of forest, rocky soil, plentiful fish and whales, and deep natural harbors. Now with weather and land features like this, New England colonists had lots of different ways that they could make money. That said, the New England economy looked something like this. Lots of forest equals shipbuilding and lumber mills. Cold oceans filled with fish and whales equals commercial fishing and whaling. Deep harbors equals shipping and trade. And finally, cold weather plus rocky soil equals subsistence farming. Think of subsistence farming like more of a family garden where nothing's really intended to sell. Now the port city of Boston, Massachusetts became this region's center for trade and was pretty much where all of the good stuff happened leading all the way up to the Revolutionary War. Okay, so we started up here. Now let's go all the way to the other side of the 13 colonies map and talk about the Southern colonies. These five colonies are very originally known as the Southern colonies. They are Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The geography of the South is actually really straightforward. It's hot, humid, has rich, fertile soil, and broad, slow-moving rivers. The economy of the South is also pretty straightforward. Hot, humid weather plus rich, fertile soil equals agriculture. ag ri co -ture. In other words, you farmed or did something else related to farming. Now this region became dependent on growing cash crops like tobacco, rice, indigo, and cotton. It also became the region known for its use of slave labor. Charleston, South Carolina and Baltimore, Maryland became two major port cities in the South. All right, so now we have our region at the top of the map, New England, and our region at the bottom of the map, Southern colonies. Now let's go to the middle of a 13 colonies map. I bet you can't guess what this region's called. Yep, you're genius, the Middle Colonies. They are New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Now being in the middle, their geography resembled both the New England and the Southern Colonies. Temperatures were moderate, which means they felt just right, like in the story of Goldilocks. The soil was still rich, and there were deep harbors and rivers. This led to a pretty diverse economy. Moderate temperatures plus rich soil equals wheat crops and livestock. Livestock are farm animals. The middle colonies grew so much wheat that they earned the nickname the breadbasket. Deep harbors also allowed for major trading port cities like Philadelphia and New York to develop. 
Wow, lots of information today, but there's really just one question you need to walk away knowing, and that is, can you analyze how a region's geography would influence its economy? Now, when you started watching this video today, you probably weren't thinking, oh, this is a math video, but an equation here is very helpful. So when we think about a region's geography and economy and how they're related, here's a simple equation. Geography equals economy. Now, if you can use that equation to answer today's question, you can be very confident that you are going to understand how these regions develop in future lessons. All right, well, there you have it. You've officially been schooled by Mr. Chaffin. Thank you for watching today. And remember, history needs you to keep the story going. See you next time.